You're listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life, hosted by Travcon. Welcome to the Exhibitor Minute of the podcast, Travel Nursing and Allied Life. I'm Michelle, and I'm your host. Today, we're going to talk about housing, and specifically about a great resource to help you find housing for your next assignment. Stay tuned because we'll also be talking about tips that you can look for when you want to avoid getting scammed when you're looking for a housing assignment as well. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much. With me today is Brian Payne. He is the co-founder and CEO of Furnish Finder. And if you don't know Furnish Finder yet, it's an online marketplace for traveling professionals to find and book monthly furnished housing. It's also a site where landlords can go and list their property for the purpose of finding professional tenants. Welcome, Brian Payne. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I'm happy to be here. You know, travel travel nursing is tough. Travel healthcare is tough. But what's made it even harder, 10 years ago, all the companies supplied their own housing, pretty much. 80%, 90% of the travelers took housing that was covered by their company. But over the years, more and more, it swung almost completely the other way. And 70 to 80% of the housing is now managed by travelers themselves. They want to find their own housing. They want to do it themselves. So back in 2014, I believe it was, you started Furnished Finder. And tell us a little bit about why you started it and how it fits in with the travel community. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, it was 2014. Um, and we, uh, we got our start there at TravCon. It was our first convention there and, and really got us in with a lot of travel nurses and, and really started to kind of understand who they were. I had a lot of experience with travel nurses prior. Um, my wife and I were landlords and we would rent to travel nurses. So um, I was in the healthcare field myself. So I was um, not only kind of doing late cases or, you know, ER checks, things like that. I worked in cardiac uh, devices. So I had a lot of access to these travel nurses. So sometimes I would work with them in the cath lab and the ER, OR, ICU, but then I would also, you know, be their landlord as well. So <laughs> hospitals were great for me as a landlord because it gave me access to a lot of my tenants. So that's kind of what got the wheels turning we had probably, I think, 10 places that we were renting to travel nurses. And, and really that was our model and uh, as landlords. And then we said, well, you know, the travel nurse kept telling me over and over again, housing is the hardest part. Like it's mm-hmm. not the credentials. It's not the paperwork. It's not the travel. It's not, it's housing. It's, it's unpredictable. It's uh, expensive. <clears throat> and um, there has to be a better way. So that's kind of where we saw the opportunity um, since sold our places and uh, focused, you know, making a marketplace for travel nurses and landlords where they can come together and find affordable housing. So with Furnish Finder, quick plug. So there are no uh, markups. So there's no commissions like a vacation rental platform and there are no uh, booking fees either. So um, the prices that you see on furnishfinder.com, those are listed exactly and only by the landlords. Uh, you go direct to the landlord. So uh, the middleman, so to speak, uh, is cut out. Landlord pays us uh, to list a fair and modest price to, uh, to list their place up front. And then the travelers come and they get to consume all the housing they want for free. There's no, uh, we never take any money from any traveler ever. That sounds like that's the key difference between you and Airbnb. With Airbnb, the user pays, they, they pay Airbnb, and then Airbnb takes a significant cut from the landlord. Yeah. And, yeah. and you've completely bypassed that, which is a yeah, really nice feature. By design. Uh, landlords, they, I mean, for monthly furnished rentals and for vacation rentals, it's, it, it, it's different, right? But for monthly furnished rentals, for us as landlords, we said, well, we want to know who's going in there. We don't want to just rent to anybody online. Um, so yeah, Airbnb, they charge 15 to 18% to the traveler. So depending on your length of stay, it could be hundreds. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it could, it could, um, a platform like Furnish Finder can, can save travelers hundreds. It um, saves you a lot of money, especially when almost every assignment is two to three months. It's a significant time. 
they renew, it could be six months. It's up there. So I've seen your map on your site. It's pretty incredible. The amount of listings that you have. Tell us a bit about the listings. What, what kind of housing should one expect when they go to your website? Yeah. I mean, you're going to see primarily, um, you know, private units, you're going to see rooms as well. Um, it's unique. So if you have a back house, you have a, a studio, a basement, like a walkout basement, or you maybe you're just one of your rent, you're an empty nester and you have a couple of rooms. You know, we get a lot of people that, that healthcare travelers have helped them along the time, uh, along the way. I'm thinking of one who said, look, you know, we love this hospice nurse who just, she surrounded my mother. She surrounded us as a family and we love her. And we could get $3,200 for this back house that we built for my mom, uh, you know, second, third person. But, and then she, and then, but they said, look, we're going to rent it to a travel nurse where we could get over double, but we're going to get maybe $1,500 a month. It's in a higher price mm -hmm. city, uh, city. So, um, so you get all types of landlords that want to list with all types of properties, but you can expect, you know, rooms, you can expect basements, back houses, mm -hmm. granny flats, above garage studios, uh, and then the normal type of housing, uh, apartments, condos, things like mm -hmm. that. And also uh, hotels, uh, we are, um, we're rolling out uh, a large hotel presence on our site, on the hotels page. So oh, good. Uh, even if it's for a night or two, maybe yeah. you want to get boots on the ground, kind of survey the area or, you know, uh, orientation starts. You want to get in there a few days before your, um, you know, your place is ready, something like that. Even if it's for a couple of days, hotel partners are, are just really imperative. Um, and a very important piece of the traveler's journey. Um, the, they're also an important piece in an area where the, the housing is super tight, maybe right. in a city or something like that, or, you know, whatever you had fell through and you need to get uh, a hotel, even if it's for two months, some of the longer stay, you right. know, extended stay also uh, exhibits with us. Absolutely. And, and they are prepared to have you they stay there for two, three months. Yeah, and I think you partner with them as well, great right? Partner. Um, yeah. And uh, you can go on our map right now on the hotels page and you could uh, book extended stay America properties um, at a, at a significant discount that you could find from, you know, compared to like an Expedia or any other yes. hotels.com or things like that. So definitely shop us is all I'm trying mm -hmm. to say. You know, I think what you'll find is that the discounts that we've uh, worked with these amazing companies um, will save travel nurses money. That's what we're all about. And, and one of the things I like when I've been to your website is you pop up the map and you can instantly tell in 30 seconds what the average rate of housing is going for in that area. Mm. So something good for travelers too is when they're working on a contract and they're given so and so much for housing or they want to know how much they need for housing, it's yeah. the ideal venue to quickly look up what is the average housing going for this particular town, city, area. Uh, That's a really nice feature. That, it's, it's actually a very... Um, very, re really good point. Cause travelers, they're, they're always, maybe they're shopping two or three areas. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get a stipend for, you know, for these yeah. areas and they're going to find out how far their stipend can take them. That's what they want to know is mm -hmm. how far can this stipend take me or how much money, how much extra stipend cash can I keep? Right. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, one glance at the map and you can get a, a pretty good idea of, of that area. Because if you're, you know, from the Midwest and you're coming West, there's going to be a sticker shock. Um, in oh, some yeah. of the there's some very, very expensive housing. And mm -hmm. I'll just mention real briefly, um, uh, two things. Number one, on our homepage, there's a budget tool where you can get a report very similar to what mm -hmm. Michelle is talking about that has a little bit more uh, data that we pull from the map. Um, but it's a really unique situation that we're in right now. Uh, unique, I don't know if it's the right word, but it's, it's a kind of a challenging time um, in terms of housing. So there's kind of a crunch where travel nurses are feeling it. So travel nurses, you know, before they were really a, um, 
a segment of travelers that are very, very consistent. They're always traveling, always looking for monthly furnished housing. Mm -hmm. um, and you could always count on a travel nurse, right? Well, one of the reasons why we hitched our wagon to the travel nurse train, you know, because they make great tenants and we knew it because we were landlords. But now travel nurses have, have competition. So there's uh, anybody who's working remotely from home, yeah. they're realizing that they can work anywhere. You've you know? probably seen a huge shift with, you know, housing through the roof, everyone's suddenly wanting to travel and can travel, but they can only travel within the country. I'm yeah. sure that has really dramatically changed your availability. How's the availability looking right now? Yeah, it's, um, it's a great point. And you're spot on the, you know, avail we're, we have about 70,000 properties on the map. So there's a lot to choose from, but the time, the available time is shrinking. Mm -hmm. Um, and unfortunately, the, the market is, we're in an inflationary time. So not only do we have less inventory, but you have more people. It's very similar to the real real estate market, right? The, the real yeah. estate sales market. Um, it, I think it's an overflow from that. But, right. um, you know, we're seeing um, properties uh, just fly off the shelves. So, you know, you may have to think as a travel nurse, you may have to think a little bit differently than you did last year. You know, you might realize you might need to realize that you're in a com competitive situation um, and that, you know, they, you know, the market, because we are in an inflationary time, you might see rents that are a little bit higher. We're seeing maybe 10 to 15 percent higher. Um, and it's it's not just travel nurses, it's allied and therapists, you know, basically any kind of healthcare worker, right, is who. You yeah, are. I apologize. I, you know, yeah. I sometimes lump every, all the traveling healthcare workers into that group. Yeah. Um, but of course it's, it, and it's not even just healthcare, it's, it's everything. So healthcare is now where they had a real nice kind of niche yeah. market, so to speak. Other people know about it. <laughs> Remote workers are coming in and, um, and grabbing that, that inventory as well. Plus right. your travel is really cutting into the availability because you always have landlords that sometimes they're a, you know, okay, I'll do a couple of weeks on Airbnb um, and then I'll do a couple of months on Furnish Finder, things like that. So, you know, if they get a week or two throughout the month of July, August, September, well, then they can't take really a travel nurse who's looking for uh, or a traveling healthcare professional for um, three months because right. the calendar has a couple of weeks already blocked off. So, so the healthcare travelers are battling the housing crisis that's at an all time high. They're battling yes. the, uh, prof the all types of professionals that can work from home. So they decide they want to work in Colorado for the summer and yeah, they're battling all the Colorado's vacationers. Great. Yeah. So there, there really, there is a high competition just as there is with the contracts. You could take your time with contracts and housing in the past, and now you have to be on it. You do a quick glance at what rates are for yeah. that area for housing, then you know you can go over to your contract and you you know what you can afford, but yeah. then you have to run right back and lock in something right away for your housing because they're they're going like hotcakes right now. Yeah, well, I didn't realize it was, I don't have exposure to the job market so much, but it sounds- It's getting exactly faster. What we're seeing here. It is. Now, what benefit does a traveler- a healthcare traveler have when they book with you over something they see on Facebook marketplace or any other site, do you have any protections built in with your site? Yeah, uh, we actually do. So, I mean, I'll mention one thing about Facebook marketplace or Facebook uh, groups are great. We've got a Facebook group. It's got 65,000 people in it and it's a, it's a great tool to connect with um, you know, your peers, ask questions, learn, things like that. But, um, you know, unfortunately scammers are using Facebook groups, excuse me, and also Facebook messenger as a tool. Um, and they're reaching out. So if you say, Hey, I'm mm -hmm. looking for, you know, Baltimore in, uh, September, well, all of a sudden you're going to get a, uh, a private message through messenger saying, Hey, I've got a place in Baltimore. Here are the pictures and here's the price. And all I need is a deposit and you can hold it, you know, um, so you do have to be careful uh, as, mm -hmm. as the demand for housing goes up and the competition goes up, you know, we don't want you to be in a position where you're desperate um, and, and 
not thinking straight and eventually fall in fall prey to one of these scammers. So be careful on Facebook groups. They, even though they say they're private, they are not. And uh, you do need to be careful there. Um, so regarding the site, and this is why we have the site um, is because we can control as much as we possibly right. can for a mm -hmm. public website. Um, and we can't control Facebook, but we can control our site. So all of the landlords that come on um, before they are uh, approved, uh, they go through a vetting process where they actually have to go through and fill out uh, and pass a, uh, an, an online test. Basically, we, we pull up um, past credit questions, you know, what type, what, what comp bank did they have a mortgage with uh, two years ago? You know, what car did they drive in, in you know, 2020? Things like this that only they will know that, you, that these companies pull okay. from the credit report and other public records. Uh, but they have to uh, pass this in addition to uh, an, a, a full ID scan. Um, and there's a few more layers as well. So we've learned that traveler safety is the utmost importance. Like travelers are, are not going to use us if they don't feel safe on our platform. So we have uh, invested a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of, um, you know, we have a lot of effort into our partnerships that will um, screen every landlord. So, you know, ultimately that the landlord is who they say they are because anybody yeah. can get pictures, anybody can say whatever they want anonymously online. So you got to be careful on Craigslist and things like that. You guys already know. And, but this is one of the differences about furnished finders. All of the, all of the landlords are um, vetted and authenticated. Um, That's huge because we all hear of stories from Verbo and, and a variety of the others that it can happen. The pictures could be there, but they could be false. They could not be in the country. There's so many things. But while we're on that topic, uh, can you give us a few hints on if they happen not to book through you or just in general booking any kind of uh, housing, what are some signs that would tip them off? Hey, maybe this is a scam. Maybe this isn't legitimate. So listen to your mom, you know, trust your gut, right? If it's, if something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. Mm -hmm. uh, give yourself that credit. Where did the initial, the conversation initiate from? Did they reach out to you? Was it through a Facebook group? Did they say they had pictures? Did they say they had a furnish finder listing? If they say they have a furnish finder listing, go to furnish finder and look online and see their actual listing. If they're on furnish finder, they have been vetted and authenticated. But if they don't actually have a furnished finder listing, you know, you're on your own there. Okay. So that's one, one way to do it. Um, you know, if you're on Craigslist or Facebook, they're going to say, okay, here's this place. It's going to be, you know, probably $500 cheaper than, um, than what you'd normally see out there. They like expensive marketplaces, uh, expensive areas. So they're going to choose, you know, the Nashville, LA, you know, anywhere in California, New York, all the expensive areas so they can mm -hmm. get a high deposit. That's what they're looking to do. They're going to prey on your fear. They're going to prey on your uh, desperation to have a, a, to find a place. And they'll say, great, if you want to go ahead and lock this up, because I've got three other people mm -hmm. who are willing to get this place. And if There's you want- always you someone know. waiting. I remember that yeah, line. They, they like to take money through Zelle. They like to take money through Cash App. Um, so be aware there, you know, Furnish Finder has a, an online, uh, a place where you can do safe rent payments as well. Mm -hmm. um, pay with a credit card. You have recourse with a credit card. You don't have recourse with a Zelle or a Cash App. It's like, a, it's like if you've ever wired money, wired money. As soon as you wire money, the money's gone. Like that bank can't take it back. There's no, they can't say, oh, please stop. No, it's it's gone as soon as they push mm -hmm. that button. So yeah, try to pay with a credit card. At least you have recourse. Um, if you pay with a credit card, that most likely that landlord is also a legitimate landlord because credit card companies need to vet these people in order to give them you know, credit card processing. Let me see, what other types of um, red flags I think the spelling mistakes are big, especially if there's, you know, that's usually your big flag with any spam. Uh, yeah, hey, you know, I've got access to your computer. Are, oh, yeah. they're outside of us, right? So they yes. are, 
you know, maybe they're going to spell travelers with two L's or shop with two P's and an E. Like, well, well, hey, hey, wait a minute. That's Canadian and that's perfectly legitimate. That is not a spelling mistake. Also true. You you happen to, this is Canada Day. I love it. it. Um, And a lot of times they don't, they prefer text message, right? So they don't want to talk to you because a lot Mm -hmm. of people, they just don't want to talk, but everything's going to be through text. They're always going to have an excuse. Give them credit though. They are sharp. They, this is what they do for a living. This is not a hobby for them. Um, this is all they do. So they are smart. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't think they're dumb. Don't think they're, I mean, they're, unfortunately, this is all they do and they're good at it. So yeah. they're going to give you an ID even, oh, uh, they have an ID and it matches the name on the listing. So it should be good. Or they'll have a passport, all of that's stolen. They can get all of that on the black market. So, or they can create it themselves. So just because they have an ID or a passport, that's not good enough. Mm-hmm. Well, those are really good tips because I think that will help travelers stay a little bit safer on the hunt for housing. Cause right now it's really tight. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to circle back to, you say you offer monthly furnishing. What if, sorry, monthly furnished housing, right? What happens if a traveler wants only two weeks or uh, six weeks, something that's beyond a month, but not a full two months. How does that work? You know, yes, our niche is monthly furnished housing. Uh, Cause that's again, where, what trap, what travel nurses and, and healthcare professionals need. Right. Yes. Um, but sometimes it's eight weeks. Sometimes they're in a place and they leave and they only, they want to finish out their assignment. So there's all sorts of sorts of scenarios. Um, our landlords, I, you know, when I was a landlord, I was looking for travel nurses that would, um, that would stay for any length of time. Most of the time it was, it was 13 weeks, but I know that there are some shorter contracts out there. Short answer is check with the landlord. So everybody on this site, they listed individually. You know, it could be one of the large uh, property management companies that you're familiar with, like, like Sonder, June Homes, things like that. Or it could be a mom and pop that really, they're just renting their, their back house. So you have to check with each individual person to find out, hey, is six weeks okay? We have a housing request feature. So you can go in and you can type in your, your dates of stay. And um, so fill out the housing request. It'll go kind of get blasted out and, and uh, to the properties that match. And then those people that have availability and can accommodate you for those six weeks, then they can reach out. We are coming up with, um, with shorter stays because, you know, let's face it, you know, sometimes you need shorter stays. Obviously, hotels are very important, but in terms of shorter stays for... Uh, other property types, uh, many landlords have asked us to do that. So that's something that nice. we will. But so, yeah, on a, on a case-by-case basis, reach out to the landlord, tell them what you're looking for. Perfect. And so the expectation is generally minimum 30 days. After that, you know, whatever availability they have, they will let you know and work with you because you're yeah. working directly with the landlord, which is nice. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, you you know exactly who you're working with. You're, it's no, it's not a cloak and dagger system where you you know you have to try to yes. spell out your email or spell out your phone number to try to get them off. You know, you just have access to the uh, to the landlord. The landlord has access to the travelers they're matched and, with. And how does the traveler pay the landlord? We have a uh, uh, online rent payment service uh, through KeyCheck. KeyCheck mm-hmm. is a sister company for uh, Furnish Finder. But ultimately, it's up to the uh, the landlord and the traveler. Okay, so it could be any number of methods, whatever that particular landlord prefers. Yep. Okay. Good. Yeah, could be it could be a check. You know, it could be, um, hey, don't pay me until you get here. It could be, hey, you know, pay me through key check. Um, you know, the deposit will handle the rest via check when you get here. You know, everybody's different. Right. We're going to see you at Travcon this year. Yeah. Not only at your booth, but you're also part of the housing panel that's going to be with uh, Julia Kuhn is hosting that and you're on the housing panel. Yep. We're excited. That's fantastic. And then it's also, we have you back to back with our RV talk, which so many travelers are into RVs because housing is a challenge. Uh, they also are considering RVs to be able to have that flexibility to go places. So there's a lot of housing options to be found at Travcon this year, and you are a prime member of that. It's great to have you there. Thank you. 
Uh, one thing I wanted to ask is with housing, with housing so tight right now, what can travelers do to make themselves sort of top of the pile? What would make them the most attractive if housing is really, really tight to find in a particular area? Yeah, what a great question. Um, I would say the, the first thing on the Furnish Finder platform is download the app. And then on the app, you can, um, you can update your profile. You know, landlords want to see profiles and we haven't done an outstanding job of, of promoting the traveler profile. It's something that we are going to um, fix and it's, it's going to be a little bit more front and center and in the workflow. So we'll ask you to do the profile. But for those, those travelers that are already using Furnish Finder, download the app and, and um, you know, update your profile because landlords want to see who you are. Um, sure. Second thing is be a little bit more flexible, I think, you know where you may have had a knee jerk reaction to, you know, oh my gosh, that place is $1,600 or that, that landlord wants me to do a tenant screening report. I'm not going to do that because I'm already background checked. I'll just mention this briefly. Um, just, just be a little bit more flexible because if you're not willing to do a background check, I'm sorry, a, a tenant screening report, because they are different than a background check. Um, if you're not willing to, there's probably your competition that there's three other people in line that will do it and, and realize that this is not 2019, 2020, this is 2021. It's everything's different. Prices might be a little higher. So if you're adjusting your expectations mm -hmm. in terms of pricing of mm -hmm. what you've seen in the past, um, it's just like if you're in the real estate sales market, you might lose out on that property because it's not adjusted to the current market. I don't know how long it's gonna last like this. I'm not saying it's exorbitant. We have incredible deals still. I think, you know, it's like wholesale. So if you go to our site and you click on your, um, you just apply the filters and you uh, apply the price filter, put it to 1600, put it to 1800 and see what's there. I mean, I think mm -hmm. you'll be really surprised how affordable we are and, and primarily because we're not taking anything off the top. Yeah, that's really nice. You've got a service that is not costing the travelers anything more. However, you've given them a lot of protection with the coverages that you have and checking and vetting. So that's a really nice feature. Does a tenant report or a tenant check affect your credit rating as a person? Yeah, that's a great, a, a really great question you bring up. So tenant screening reports, um, the way that we do it at KeyCheck, our sister company, um, is that they are a soft pull. So they don't show up as an inquiry. So if you were to get your free credit report, you probably get your credit report through one of the, the systems and then you could look at your credit report, right? And when you do that, it does not, it's not an inquiry because you're looking at it yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, what, the way that the industry has kind of moved was, okay, we'll let travelers pull their own report and then share it, choose who to share it with. And that's how we kind of get around that um, hard inquiry. So the short answer is no. Um, tenant screening reports, like your commonly known as credit checks, um, at least through key check, because those are the ones that, that we can control, um, are do not affect your credit. They don't show up as an inquiry at all on your credit report. That's good to know. But if they did it outside of, of your system, then it could affect your credit report. Yeah. I mean, there's a, a lot of pull. systems out there that, that also do soft polls. So okay. the question is no matter where the land, what service the landlord is using, the traveler should ask the question, is this a soft poll or a hard inquiry? Like, is this going to affect my credit report? Good question. Like Good when question. you go in, into the bank to get a mortgage or a loan, hard inquiry. If you're going to go and buy a car or, or lease a car, um, hard inquiry, right? Mm -hmm. And then before, same with the renting a house, hard inquiry. But these days, you, it's a soft pull. Uh, through that, each that's day. a really good thing to know. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we we're super excited to be there. I think we're booth 403. When you go in, go to the right. We'll have the pink car there. It's going to be sweet. You're uh, bringing the pink car. That's super car. cute. You've got to bring the pink car. Yes. I think I got it over here, right here. So travelers have seen this pink car on your website, but they've never actually seen it for real in person. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll, it's going to be fun. We're going to have fun this year. So yeah. 
stop by. We've got a lot of um, handouts and swag and we're just going to have fun. We're just really excited coming off of last year. Oh, I know. We're just excited to be in front yeah. of y'all. Travelers are really excited too. They're, they're going to be really pumped to be there. So yeah, thank you so much fun. for being a great supporter of the event. You're also a big supporter of the podcast. Thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. Of You'll course. next be sponsoring in September. So that's a great month great. as well. And uh, we look forward to it. Thank you so much. And look forward to seeing the pink car at TravCon. And yeah, you can, you can find Furnish Finder at FurnishFinder.com and a great website, great app, awesome service. We encourage you to check them out. Thanks for listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life. You can find the full show notes below or at TravCon.org. Please help us out by rating our podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts.